Some things add normally. For example, 2 kilograms plus 4 kilograms equals 6 kilograms. Other things don't add at all. For example, clock readings. It's meaningless to say 2 o'clock plus 5 o'clock. Temperatures do not add at all. It's totally meaningless to say 10 degrees plus 20 degrees. In a later chapter, we'll find that heat energy adds normally, but temperatures do not. If you have a tub full of hot water and add a cup full of cold water, the resulting temperature is not the sum of the two, but it is a weighted average. For other things, the sum depends on the angle between them. For example, if I start at point S and walk 5 meters to the right, indicated by path A, and then stop, turn through an angle, and walk another 5 meters along path B, ending up at point P. That's equivalent to having taken a single walk from point S to point P. I could have instead chose to walk straight down, or to the upper left, or straight back to my starting place. We see that we could end up anywhere along this circle after having taken two walks separated by an angle theta. We write C equals A plus B. When the sum of two things depends on the angle between them, then we refer to those as vector quantities. We write little arrows over the symbols A, B, and C to indicate that they are vector quantities. Through this year, we'll meet many physical quantities that are vectors, including position, velocity, acceleration, force, electric field, magnetic field, and so on. The amount of mass is indicated by a single number, for example, 2 kilograms. We say that mass is a scalar quantity. Two quantities are needed to specify a vector. For example, vector B, which was the second walk, has a magnitude of 5 meters, and it has an angle of 53 degrees. A vector has both magnitude and direction. The magnitude is written as a B with a vector arrow over it, surrounded by absolute value signs, or more simply, as just B without the little overhead arrow. The vector B is written as a letter B with an arrow over it, or as the letter B written in bold, and its magnitude is written as a letter B without an arrow over it. For a numerical example, suppose that we start at the origin of this XY coordinate system and walk 10 meters at an angle of 35 degrees above the positive X axis. Represent this walk with vector A written in bold. The vector A has magnitude of 10 meters and an angle of 35 degrees. Let's make a triangle and calculate the lengths of each side. The hypotenuse of this triangle is the same as the magnitude of the vector A, which is 10 meters. This side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle, so we write A sub X equals A cosine theta A. Please get your calculator to verify that 10 times cosine of 35 degrees is 8.19 meters. This side of the triangle is opposite the angle, so we write a sub y equals a sine of theta a, and please verify with your calculator that you get 10 sine of 35 degrees equals 5.74 meters. That means the walk from the origin to this point was equivalent to walking 8.19 meters along the x-axis and then 5.74 meters along the y-axis. And the Pythagorean theorem says that 5.74 squared plus 8.19 squared square root is equal to 10. After taking the first walk A, let's take a second walk B, which has a magnitude of 20 meters and is at an angle of theta B equals 50 degrees above the positive X axis. Let's make a triangle for vector B. This side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle, so we write B sub X equals B cosine theta B, 
which is 20 cosine of 50 degrees, equals 12.86 meters. This side of the triangle is opposite the angle, so we write b sub y equals b sine theta b equals 20 sine of 50 equals 15.32 meters. All of these numbers are recorded here. Next, we write a single walk C, which is the sum of the two walks A and B. We write vector C equals vector A plus vector B. Let's make triangle C and determine the lengths of its sides. We see that this side of triangle C has the same length as the sum of the sides of triangles A and B. We write C sub x equals A sub x plus B sub x. And this is equal to 8.19 meters plus 12.86 meters makes 21 meters. We see that this side of triangle C has the same length as the sum of the sides of triangles A and B. We write C sub y equals A sub y plus B sub y equals 5.74 plus 15.32 equals 21 meters. Now that we know the x and y sides of triangle C, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse of C. It's equal to C sub x squared plus C sub y squared square root, which is the square root of 21 squared plus 21 squared, which is 30 meters. To find the angle in triangle C, we write tan theta C equals rise over run equals C sub y over C sub x equals 21 over 21 equals 1. And then we untan both sides to get theta C equals tan inverse of 1 equals 45 degrees. Taking the two walks A and B is equivalent to taking the single walk C. We write the vector equation C equals A plus B, where the vectors are written in bold letters. We add vectors by adding components. We find the angle of the resultant vector C using tan theta. We find the hypotenuse of triangle C, which is also the magnitude of vector C using the Pythagorean theorem. We add two three-dimensional vectors A and B by separately adding the X parts, Y parts, and Z parts. The Pythagorean theorem looks like this in three dimensions. Press pause to look at this second example. This looks like a lengthy process, but the good news is through the next year, we'll get to do this one million times. Earlier, we had decided that vector A had a portion 8.19 meters lying along the x-axis and a portion 5.74 meters lying along the y-axis. An alternative to stating a vector in terms of its magnitude and direction or angle, we can instead state the x and y portions of a vector. For bookkeeping purposes, we create a unit vector i that points along the x-axis and a unit vector j that points along the y-axis and a third unit vector k that would point along the z-axis. In terms of these unit vectors, we can specify the vector a as 8.19 i hat plus 5.74 j hat. The vector B can be written as 12.86 i hat plus 15.32 j hat. We add these vectors by adding components. The vector C can be written as 21 i hat plus 21 j hat. In general, we write vector addition this way. The vector A, whose symbol has the arrow over it, can be written in terms of multiples of the unit vectors. It's a sub x i hat plus a sub y j hat plus a sub z k hat, where the unit vectors are pronounced as i hat j hat and k hat. The vector b is written in terms of its x, y, and z components. Then the vector c, which is the sum of the two vectors a and b, 
has components AX plus BX I hat plus AY plus BY J hat plus AZ plus BZ K hat. For example, given the vector A that's 2I plus 3J plus 4K and the vector B that's 5I minus J minus K, then the sum vector C is 7I plus 2J plus 3K. 2 plus 5 makes 7, 3 minus 1 makes 2, and 4 minus 1 makes 3. Vector addition is easiest when we already know all of the components. The magnitude of vector C is found from a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. C is the square root of CX squared plus CY squared plus C sub Z squared. In this case, that's 7 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, and the square root gives 7.9. For two-dimensional systems, we find the angle that the resultant vector makes with the plus x axis by using the inverse tangent of c sub y over c sub x. By definition, this formula gives the angle between c and the positive x axis. In three dimensions, the direction cosines give the angle between the vector and each of the three axes. We can also add vectors graphically. This is vector a. This is vector 2a. To negate a vector, we reverse its direction. This is vector minus a. If we are given the component form of vector a as 2i plus 3j plus 4k, we multiply the vector by 2 by multiplying each component by 2. We have 2a equals 4i plus 6j plus 8k. Here are two vectors a and b. We add vectors by placing them head to tail. We can move a vector as long as we do not change its length or orientation. Slide vector a from here to here and slide vector b from here to here. Now that the two vectors a and b are head to tail, then this is their sum. A ruler and protractor can be used to draw and add scaled vectors. In a few situations, we will add vectors tail to tail by forming a parallelogram. Let's find C equal 3A minus 2B. Here's vector A, and this is 3A. Here's vector B, and this is minus 2B. When we move these two vectors head to tail, here is 3A, and here is minus 2B, and this is the sum, C equals 3A minus 2B. Given that the components of A equals 2i plus 3j plus 4k, and the components of B equal 5i minus j minus k, then C equals 3a minus 2b is found by adding the multiples of each component. The x component of vector C is 3 times 2 minus 2 times 5 makes minus 4i hat. The y component of vector C is 3 times 3 minus 2 times minus 1 equals 11 j hat. The z component of vector C is 3 times 4 minus 2 times minus 1 makes 14 k. The magnitude of C is then found to be 18. We add a number n vectors by placing them all head to tail. Draw the series of vectors that take you from your home to the school. A vector is specified by giving the value of each of its components. Vectors can be used to turn images into numbers. Now that we've had some practice, we see that the x component of vector a is the part of A that lies along the x-axis. I'll mention in passing that in quantum mechanics, the square of these components give probabilities.